Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual tabling event. Today, we're going to be talking about tracking your progress for um, prediabetes. So let's get right into it. But first, we're going to beat it into you. What is prediabetes? So prediabetes is when blood sugar levels are high, but not quite high enough to be diagnosed as type 2 diabetes. It's important to note at this point, insulin resistance is starting to occur. And so your body is not responding to insulin um, as effective as it should be. And at this point, many, many people actually don't experience any symptoms of prediabetes. So how prevalent is prediabetes? Well, one third of the American adult population actually have prediabetes. So about eight in 10 people with prediabetes don't realize they have it because there's often no associated symptoms. So it's important to get screened for prediabetes. And so what's the big deal? Well, prediabetes can eventually develop into type two diabetes, which can cause many different health problems. So for example, kidney disease, um, diabetic neuropathy or nerve damage, poor foot and oral health, vision loss and skin infections. And in addition, prediabetes also means you have an increased risk for heart disease, stroke, and certain types of cancer, such as stomach and um, colorectal cancer. And so why should we track our progress? Well, for one, it kind of helps visualize our progress and make necessary change and make changes if necessary. So for example, like if you're, when you're starting out, maybe you um, do 60 minutes of, ex of activity. And then the next week you might do 65. And then the following week, maybe you do 80. And you can see that nice trend. And then for example, maybe you see, like so you can start seeing trends and you can start seeing increases in your progress. But maybe if you start seeing um, like stagnation where stuff is kind of relatively the same, that also gives you a point to like, like it, it makes it all, it also makes it easier for you to kind of identify what you need to change or maybe what you need to increase. And so it kind of playing into that, it gives us an accurate account into our activity. So you can kind of notice this with like even eating. So if you kind of do it more intuitively, you might say like, oh, well, I think I ate around 2000 calories. But if you actually keep track, like keep a written um, track of what you're eating, then you can kind of have like a definite answer of, oh, okay, I ate 1800, 1850 calories instead of um, just kind of going off by, you know, quickly guessing. And then in addition, it also helps build habit and commitment. And so it gets you in the routine of, you know, of having to write everything down and which will further kind of help you can reinstate, um, you know, healthy eating habits and um, healthy exercise habits. So tracking food intake is also good for this in a food diary or any type of diary you can get in the store. And you track each meal. This includes beverages and snacks. And generally you wanna track calories, your total carbs, added sugars and saturated fat. And you can do this using, um, I, I know of Weight Watchers, you can put in the, um, the type of food and it will give you the calories, carbs, added sugars and saturated fat. But also looking at labels, if your food has labels or um, there are uh, calorie counters that you can use online if you're cooking from scratch. So there are ways to find out how many calories, carbs, sugars, and fat there are in your food if you're making it from home. I um, mean, it's important to track these changes to see how much you're actually eating versus being uh, intuitive and thinking, oh, I ate about 2,000 calories. Um, you can really start to hone in on areas that you might want to change. Um, maybe you're out of control snacking. So you can see that when you're, you're putting these items in your diary, maybe you're eating too much peanut butter. Um, you think peanut butter, oh, it's healthy. But if you're eating um, two tablespoons a day for your snack, maybe doing that twice a day, you wanna cut down to one time a day and then maybe just one tablespoon of peanut butter per day. And so you can also track like your different exercises. And generally you kind of wanna tra track each time you do an exercise. So usually you'll just kind of um, track like the activity you do and for how many minutes. 
And then depending on the activity, you could also go for reps, sets, miles. And this is kind of a good way to visualize, you know, your progress. So if you're, you know, so starting out, you might say like, oh, I, like if you're, you know, strength training, maybe you do three sets of eight reps. And then over time, you can kind of see as your um, activity level increases, then maybe you do five sets of 10. And so it's a really good kind of way to visualize, um, to visualize your progress. So there are mobile options that can help you start. These are convenient. Um, you, there's also other applications that track your weight um, and also calorie counters. Those are important too. Usually they include other features such as diet and exercise plans. They also include um, like weight training plans. So using these can be a really good option if you're not down for using paper. Uh, I know these are work better with the youth and some older folks might be more comfortable with the paper, but either way there are options for you. And so that is all we have for you today. So if you have any other questions, feel free to comment or else email us at our team email, hbdp at glick.net. Thank you.